Hello. Now I'm going to tie one fly that's been working for me, I think on every river I've been. And uh, first time I used it in this particular recipe, I used it when I was in Mongolia. And it brought me significantly more fish than any other nymph I've been using there. So, I'll start with pink thread, which I'm going to color in something else, because I don't want to see this pink color through the dubbing. This is going to be hot spot, and the reason why I'm doing it like this is they're just too lazy to change bobbins as I go through the fly. So, for this fly I'm going to use cocktail yarn for the tail, as I do for most of my flies, dry nymphs. Just the, the color of this material that I really, really like. I don't think that it, it is much better for nymphs than any other feather material, like any, like domestic rooster is also fine, so just if you have someone that has chickens somewhere, just pinch a few feathers and you'll have enough of the tailing materials for like light time. Uh, for ribbing I'm going to use silver wire. I like it because it's nice, shiny. This one is pretty strong and thick, so I'm, I'm trying to go as uh, with as little less turns as possible because I don't want to make too bulky body with this fly. Uh, and then for dubbing, it was once this one, SLF, but now it's a mixture between olive, wildcat. UV dubbing and some CDC inside. So this is a mixture, my favorite one, olive. I use as little dubbing as possible as I can because I don't want to make the bulky fly as I said. So, but also you don't need to make the tight rope, it has to be spiky. So just make it rough a bit, but then, but then don't use too much material, that's it. That's the point, the whole point. And now, this might be enough. Just this is maybe two, two and a half, three centimeters long rope. And then I'm going to wrap it around. And then again, I'll add some more for the thorax here. You can use your finger, slide it up, and then. Use your tight wraps to, to, to put some dubbing on this, and this is it. See, the whole body is covered. Now I'm going to rib it. You don't have to do it too tight, just four or five wraps. I'm not sure. See, now that it gets its shape. Tight turns. Now use this movement to cut the wire <coughs> excuse me and then now it's time to reinforce it a bit just several wraps and now I have pink part I will do my wood finish right now one of them okay now I will take a CDC feather for legs so, small bunch of it. Cut those white parts, you don't need them. So, I prefer to do it like this to pinch it with my finger. Okay, now I can put it wherever I want it. Okay, now so I will turn my mice the other way and do the same motion again. So I do it from the other side of the feather because usually they have that symmetry so I can just use the same amount of barbels and barbels for the legs. Again, I will turn it forward, pinch it with my finger, nail, whatever you want to use. Now when I do my wood finish, I will fold it back again, and this will lock itself into the knot here. So, 
touch it with your fingers back and make that hot spot which will push it back also. So this is like a mayfly, uh, pupa, sedge pupa, it can be anything but it's just the color and the size that uh, actually uh, are making the fly work or not. And of course the depth you are using it. If you're using the right fly at the wrong depth, now you won't catch any fish. Now I think this is too long, so I'll just pinch it like this and take it. <coughs> and this is it, finished fly. Very simple and very effective fly. And I mean, even when I talk, you can see that, that sometimes when I make some sound, it, it moves like slight movements and whatever. It's very, very, very fluffy and any tiny current will move. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you will like this fly and try it, it's very very good.